Nathan, philosophy of biology traditionally has focused on evolution, which is appropriate. What um, we're trying to do is to take the thinking of philosophy of biology and apply it to new areas that we're all wrestling with. And one of the most important for our future certainly is, is transhumanism in its various forms from genetic engineering to mind uh, uh, machine melding um, and whether it's uh, the preliminary cochlear implants or even optic implants mm -hmm. in crude ways now to much more advanced theoretical stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the principles that you look to, uh, for example, in human enhancement uh, that uh, will be part of the transhuman approach? What are the long range implications of it? What are the ethical requirements? What, what are some of the issues that we should think about? Well, it's important to remember we've been doing this for a very long time. <laughs> Extending the function of the human body, repairing the function of the human body is something we've been doing since the first stone <laughs> tools were forged. Um, and we've been you know, bandaging wounds and using splints, um, you know, the hearing aid, crude hearing aids, and you're wearing eyeglasses. We, we've been modifying and enhancing our bodies for a very long time. Um, and I think that's in the grand tradition of, of human nature to not just accept our limits. Uh, we always want to go beyond our limits and see what we can do. Um, we're on the cusp now, I think, of some really interesting cures, for example, uh, gen uh, for genetic diseases. Genetic diseases um, used to be you know, fairly incurable because correcting someone's DNA, mm -hmm. you know, that was what you did in science fiction. But we're now in the process, people have been cured of sickle cell anemia, cured once and for all mm -hmm. with a single treatment. Uh, we're on the, the, the verge of, uh, of offering cures to people who we could very, do very little for before, cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, uh, beta thalassemia, there, there was just not much we could do. And now we can. And I think, we, I think it would be unfair of us to, to simply throw the baby out with the bathwater because there's a lot of, uh, of human babies in that bathwater that we can save with these genetic cures. And I, so I think you're gonna to start to see that in the next 10 years, uh, that these will be deployed on, on, to scale. Um, but of course, it'll go to the, the wealthiest uh, uh, nations first and, and individuals first, um, unfortunately. Um, but then hopefully that we, we can eventually scale that. Now, as we, as we go down that path, we start to enter into much uh, muddier waters in terms of what's ethical. Um, how much is okay to change about a person's genetics? Um, can we change them even before uh, individuals are born? Um, and this is why philosophy is important. Uh, because those are decisions that we want to make together and that we want to make intentionally. We don't want you know, some scientist in some corner of the world just marching ahead uh, with, with some you know, genetically designed human um, without us um, you know, working out the ethics on that. Um, and it's the same with human machine interfaces. I, I mean, the ability to, for example, uh, allow someone to walk again who, who is a paraplegic, uh, we're very much on the cusp of that. Uh, we, we, the people who have been paralyzed for decades are now moving their arms again, thanks, thanks to this instrumentation. And I think it would be cruel to not uh, advance that. However, uh, does that mean we should all be cyborgs? Mm -hmm. um, you know, would we swap out our eyes for synthetic eyes? Maybe some of us would. However, then that gets into the area of the brain. Well, what, maybe we could all be a little smarter. We could put a little mm -hmm. chip in there. Where does it end before we are all cyborgs? And so that's why, um, as much as I, I love science and I like science leading the way, these are important discussions that we need to have with, uh, with the social sciences and, and the humanities in the public sphere so that everyone has a say and we make these decisions intentionally. Um, I think the improvement of the, of the, of the, of the human future um, is, is a laudable goal, but it's one that has to be done very carefully. Um, and what are some of the key issues that you, we need to watch out for? Well, when do we lose our humanity? Um, at what point do we become uh, as much machine as man, for example? And when do we um, decide that the uniqueness of a, of a human individual um, could, could be sacrificed uh, to the collective? You know, that, that, that's why uh, we have to make these decisions because you have um, interests of dignity and individuality that we all cherish that are key to being human. Um, and um, the, the more we go down that path, the, the, the more we surrender in those regards, including even our free will. Um, and we're already down that path just with the technology that's in our pocket, let alone in our body. I mean, we think we're making all these choices independently, but you know, uh, some of the, the big tech companies are, are really making those choices for us <laughs> with the illusion of choice that we have. And if you, if, that's, that's in your pocket. If you put it in your brain, that power um, is even more, even more so. Some would say that that's an inevitable 
inevitable progress, and that's kind of a new kind of evolution. It may be inevitable. It may be that um, all the talking in the world will not prevent it. Um, I hope that's not the case. I think what our, our species, uh, when it's at its best, um, is deliberative and contemplative, and that we make these decisions carefully. And we can do that as, as, as a planet, as opposed to individual, the competition of individual uh, groups and nations and all, 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 the, all the evidence, if you're a scientist, points in the opposite direction. I think that's right. <laughs> can we or will we? Uh, I think we can make good decisions, and, and I think uh, the planet, you know, has a few uh, stories where we've come together and, and made a good decision, even um, uh, sacrificing short-term profits. Um, but will we is another story, and it might very well be that we're on on the, the the cusp of some kind of collapse because of our inability to make collective decisions carefully. Um, and, and if that's the case, maybe we're going to be in these boom and bust cycles indefinitely. I don't know. Um, but I, I would like to see uh, this technology uh, talked about in the public more because I think it demystifies uh, some of what we're trying to do. I, I don't think it's controversial uh, to use a genetic cure to cure someone from sickle cell disease. Right, right. And I think that most of the public will be 100% behind that. And it doesn't logically follow that once you do that, you're now, um, you know, designer babies are around the corner. It doesn't logically follow. Those are very different things. And so I think um, when we bring in the, the social sciences and the humanities, and we have this debate out in public, then that's the best hope um, for us making a decision that's best for all of us.